This video will review the combo scan feature for Apex EBSD. So I've put in here a uh, an iron-based meteorite. I'm just going to take a quick field of view image here. It's a little dirty, but it'll work for the video. Uh, I've set up the camera to get about 3,000 frames per second out of the camera. If I look, I'm getting a decent pattern quality. I want to go relatively fast for combo scan because the purpose is I want to look at multiple fields and then look at them, uh, use them to stitch them together to look at a large area. So as far as the indexing, I've created, if I look at my project, I've created a meteorite sample here. Right now I just have FCC and BCC loaded. Those are fine. I could also load ferrite and austenite, but that's not really too important for what we're doing now. If I click around, I see that the BCC index is fine. Maybe if I'm lucky, I'll be able to find a little FCC one. There's an FCC, a BCC, back and forth. That's why we have both of those phases selected. Now for the combo scan, uh, we basically have to set it up here. Uh, we, instead of standard, we select combo scan. And there's a little workflow that's shown here. So I've selected a 500x magnification on my microscope. That gives me a, a horizontal field width of somewhere around 800 microns. Uh, generally, the lower the, the magnification you go at, the larger the field of view for each uh, field. Um, but you also start running into some problems with distortion. Sometimes you start getting the beam current cropped off at the edge, depending on how your microscope set up and aligned. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to set it up at a 500x magnification. We have the option of looking at square fields. You can see here that reduces these to squares, or we can look at the full rectangle. Um, the idea at square fields is that we're not deflecting the beam quite as much, and so we might get a little bit less distortion. It might stitch a little bit better. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and select square fields to set this up. And if we follow this out right now, I'm on the microscope, I'm in the top left position. So I'm going to hit collect the top left image. It's going to take an image here. And within that image, you see it's put my starting location in the top left. I can position this different places, but top left is a good place to start. And then I'm going to go over to the microscope here, and I'm going to select some place just to get a kind of a few fields of view and say collect the bottom right. You can see as it's done this, it displays both the stage positions here. So here I'm at minus 1x, minus 1.3x here, I'm at positive 1, minus 33 something and minus 38 something. And we get an idea of the number of fields here. So right now it's looking at a five by five field of view based on where I've selected. You can see if I start positioning this, I can get to four, four by four. But if I say, I want to look at a little bit smaller areas. If I want to look at four by four fields, I could do something like that. And that's probably a good approximation. Now, when we talk about the sample right now, I'm using, uh, if we look here, I'm just using a stage tilt of, it's, I typed in 70, but the microscope's reading 69.9. There's no pre-tilt and there's no, tilt offset. And so pre-tilt is, of course, if you're using a pre-tilted holder. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK to this for a second. If we come under here to collect image, this is where we can set up the pre-tilted value. The stage tilt is what's being read from the microscope. Um, I'm going to click this back to bring this back up. Um, the tilt offset is a value that we can adjust to say if our pre-tilted holder is, you know, 70 degrees, but the way we mount it on the sample, it's a little bit off. So we have to put in a little adjustment factor. That's what the tilt offset does. So I'm going to run mine based on the fact that I think my sample is at the actual stage tilt. Um, but of course, to get the best results, sometimes you'll check the actual sample tilt or you have a holder that puts it in the exact plane. Um, we'll save a video on that for the, the comprehensive combo scan for another time, but that's what these values are designed to do. Uh, we also have the option, what we call oversample. Oversampling will oversample. We end up sampling regions and having areas that can be used to stitch together things in OEM analysis a little bit more uh, precisely because you have areas that you can move things back and forth. I'm going to go ahead and just use the standard one for now uh, for this demonstration. We option, have the option of doing a preview image where we'll collect an SEM image at each one. I'm not going to go do that, but that's what that's for. Um, so I now have a 4x4 four four, uh, fields of view. We're going to cover you know, 2.8 uh, millimeters by 2.1 millimeters. 
we select some sort of a step size. So our, our standard pre-tilt supply course would do 10 micron steps. Medium would do six micron steps. Fine would do two micron steps to get us a number based on the full field of view. So I'm gonna go ahead and select medium here. And I'm gonna go ahead and say collect. It gives us a little warning because it says the stage is gonna move uh, and whenever we're going to move the stage, we want people to know that it's going to move. Um, hopefully, then, as we've set up a combo scan, we know that. But, you know, generally, we like to make sure across the full the range of motion that there's there's room to position the sample. You always have to be careful when you're going to move a, a stage uh, with an EBSD detector inserted because we are, uh, you know, the detector is close to the sample and we're tilting the sample 70 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and hit yes here. It's now going to go ahead and start the collection. It's going to go to that first field of view, collect the map. And it's going to go ahead and fill that in as it starts to collect. So it shows our general map here. We can do our standard things. If I want to turn my image quality on and off, it will do that. Turn mine back and on. So you can see it kind of fills in the field of view as we're going. We're looking enough fields we can kind of see it easily enough. You can see we're getting pretty decent alignment across things uh, for the sample that's being put in. You know, if we look at the seams across there, it seems to be seaming up pretty nicely. And we can check to see how our patterns look. So our pattern quality is pretty good across that. Again, here you can see that seems nicely both horizontally and vertically. So, um, you know, this is a, a the very quick combo scan without doing any of the final alignments, just to say, look, I can get a quick result nicely. You know, and here you can see one that this one's not as perfect, and that's always one of the tricky parts. Is if your sample is perfectly at 70 degrees across the full field of view, uh, you know, here it seems pretty nicely. Here it's a little bit offset. But generally, if we're looking at a large area, you know, it's still going to give us a good idea of the grain structure, the grain size, and the texture. And so we have about, you know, the estimated time uh, generally is pretty good, but it does have to figure out for each stage movement how long it takes to do that. But you see, we're able to see sort of the large view structure and the fine view structure in the material. I apologize, it's a dirty sample, so there's some areas that's not so good, but this is what I've been using for different uh, combo scan tests as we've been developing the feature within Apex. And in this case, I've just centered, I, I did my focus in the center of this and just have left Z constant. So if it is varying a little bit, I haven't adjusted this. I've kept, so it's not moving the Z stage in this particular application. It's just moving an X and Y uh, as a first level approach to the combo scan. And again, this can be done with, with a tilted stage or a pre-tilted holder or even a combination of both. Um, the important thing is that basically the, the, the better you know your actual tilt angle, um, the, the more accurate things will be, but it's also more time consuming. So it depends on what you're trying to do with combo scan and uh, what type of information you're trying to get as to how much you need to make sure you've measured your, your sample angle. Because you can basically go and, and focus at different points on the sample to make sure, you know, using your X, Y, and Z position, are you really at 70 degrees like we're assuming, or are we off? You know, being off a half a degree will, of course, cause some, some projection distortions in the data. So it's now finished this. It's now going to automatically seam this together, stitch it together, uh, and create a data file in the HDF5 file. So I can go ahead and hit done here. I'm going to look at our project tree. Here we have it come up. This is my meteorite sample one. I double click this. It's going to start it in OIM analysis. So our single file here 
is now completely stitched together and ready for analysis.